Wow, we really may be emerging from the dark days of cinema. The past decade has lacked fun and engaging movies without agendas, but in 2022 we may finally be turning the corner. These were my thoughts as I left the theater after having watched Bullet Train. This was a fun movie. I thoroughly enjoyed this new flick based on a book of the same name by Japanese author Kotaro Isaka and starring a whole slew of excellent actors. If you hadn't read the book like I failed to do, the trailer didn't really provide very many clues as to what this film was about. If you were just going by the trailer, you would have thought that this was just another generic action movie, but this ended up being something much, much more special. This was a type of movie with many twists and turns, so I'll keep this review light on spoilers. Broad strokes, it follows the adventures of five assassins as they board a train. The story begins with Ladybug, played by Brad Pitt, getting ready to board the Shinkansen, a bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto. I actually had the same journey a few years ago on the Shinkansen, so I knew how awesome this train is in Japan. Once on board, Ladybug is tasked with retrieving a mysterious briefcase being held by another two very funny assassins, Lemon and Tangerine, played by Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Once he retrieves the case, Ladybug attempts to leave the train, but is stopped by another assassin named The Wolf, played by Bad Bunny. All the meanwhile, another assassin called The Father, played by Andrew Koji, boards the train seeking revenge for his son being pushed off of a roof. He is confronted by a mysterious schoolgirl, played by Joey King, who taunts him and coerces him to do her bidding. I like how she uses her wits to outsmart much larger opponents, rather than the tired and unrealistic portrayals of small women winning against much larger men that we've seen in movies lately. As the train continues on toward Kyoto, more of the plot unravels as the characters interact and their stories intertwine. There are some truly funny cameos by a couple great actors which I found so amusing, but I'll leave them as surprises. Some other tertiary characters include Masi Oka, whom I haven't seen much of since his stint as Hiro Nakamura on the 2004 show Heroes, as well as the boys actress Karen Fukuhara playing very charming train conductors. I'm glad these two are getting more roles as they are quite capable small screen actors in their own right. One of the things I liked most about this film was how well it was written. The story is layered in such a way that it seamlessly unravels. This intricate story examines how these individuals approach what they do and why. Each character has a fleshed out backstory and complete story arc. By the end of the movie, you knew what each character was about and how they fit into the narrative. Wow, a well-written script and narrative? Who knew that was possible these days? But director David Lynch has done it again. His previous directing credits include Deadpool 2 and Atomic Blonde, both of which have a unique style and feel which Leitch brings into Bullet Train and turns it up to 11. The cinematography and visual style of the movie feel quite fresh and fun, slightly flashy, but not overly so. He found the right balance between serious action and slapstick comedy, which is a tough thing to do usually, and just highlights his skill level as a filmmaker. The action sequence has slowly built up in intensity until a spectacular grand finale that was visually very impressive. The casting was also brilliant. At this point, Brad Pitt is a veteran actor and a known quantity, so you know you're getting real talent with him. His character's psychological struggles are on full display each time he mentions what his therapist told him. His interactions with Sandra Bullock showed off great chemistry even though Bullock received very little screen time. And speaking of chemistry, the chemistry between Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry playing Lemon and Tangerine was absolutely stellar. These two played so well off of each other, you'd think they had been best friends for decades. Henry's British accent was so close to the real thing that I was honestly surprised to learn he's red-blooded American. Aaron Taylor Johnson was also recognizable as he starred in 2012 hidden gem Savages as well as Avengers Age of Ultron. His portrayal of Tangerine makes me look forward to his take on Kraven the Hunter next year. Only upon returning home and looking him up did I learn that Hiroyuki Sanada is another actor with quite a few credits to his name, so I knew I'd seen him in a few flicks in the past, such as the new Mortal Kombat. Michael Shannon is another actor that's made a career of playing bad guys, most notably in the 2014 drama 99 Homes opposite Andrew Garfield. But I'd never seen him play a foreign accent before, so when he appeared as the White Death, I thought he had been miscast, but it, he ended up doing a decent job. Had he been alive, I'm sure David Carradine would have been a better fit, but minor gripes aside, the cast of characters definitely interacted well. 
Not since Knives Out has a band of actors done such a good job playing off of each other. The story seemed as if it were going for a modern take on Murder on the Orient Express, but instead provided its own creative and fresh narrative. The story, like the train, takes a few twists and turns, especially in its route. I've made the trip on the Shinkansen before, and it definitely didn't take as long as it did in the movie. But hey, you've got to suspend your disbelief in movies, and I was definitely sucked into the story. Also, as with most movies these days, the product placement is quite prominent. I'll be sure to grab a bottle of Fiji water after having a Corona. Overall, the film grips you from the minute the train leaves the station. It's a non-stop thrill ride full of layered characters, plot twists, and edge-of-your-seat excitement. How the characters interacted and played off of each other was charming and enjoyable, providing much-needed levity to tense situations. It was competently shot with a fresh visual style that would invite a second rewatch easily. I also enjoyed that the film didn't dabble in politics or have any sort of agenda other than to entertain the audience. I love this film. You should definitely give it a watch in the theaters. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content.